You are listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. This episode is going to be rather robust, guys. A lot of shit to talk about, man, with E3 on the horizon. Technically, it doesn't start until the 12th, but everybody has been putting out fucking trailers, all kinds of shit uh, leading up, uh, trying to give everybody some extra hype going into this E3. So, Man, I got a lot of shit, man. A lot of games to uh, touch on. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Um, and, and that's going to be the topic of this podcast. Not too much anime going on uh, because it's not there's not enough fucking room anyway. Um, yeah. So that's how we're going to kind of play that. Uh, I'm going to start off with, you know, just a little bit of uh, anime talk. And then we're going to leave it at that um, anime that I've actually uh, well, actually, I'm currently watching right now is a, a oldie but goodie. Um, I know I've spoken about a couple other anime that I was supposed to get into, but it always seems like when I get ready to do that, uh, I get sideswiped with another one. And, you know, eventually I'll get to those. Uh, and I was talking about Claymore, um, but, you know, something else got me and I'm trying to get caught up with this. This is actually an anime that I've seen, uh, you know, years back when I was younger and uh, a friend basically reminded me about this anime. And then I also heard about the uh the Blu-ray uh, collector's edition that is going to be released soon. Um, you can actually pre-order that now. And then anime is Outlaw Star. Outlaw Star was an uh, anime that was very, very big back in the 90s. Um, and it was on that popular Cartoon Network Toonami run in those days. Uh, you Also with Gundam and the Big O, which is another dope anime, I might add. But um, yeah, that's what I'm currently on right now, guys. Uh, going to finish that. It's only one season long. It was one of those animes that was so good. Um, and you wonder why they only did one season. But sometimes things are best left uh, left alone in, in terms of, you know, those things. If you got a great anime and it's fucking dope, sometimes it's better to just walk away. And, you know, case in point, um, Sword Art Online, I felt that way about that because, you know, I felt that they could have just left Sword Art Online season one and let it go. Let it be. Um, I kind of felt that season two was just added, especially the second half of season two. Um, that's just my opinion. But, you know, we're going to leave it at that. But right now, Outlaw Star, if you guys haven't heard of this uh, anime, definitely check that shit out. Um, and also keep your heads up for the uh, collector's edition uh, coming out very soon on Blu-ray. That is a fucking must buy if you are a uh, Outlaw Star fan. With that being said, I'm going to move on and going to jump on what I'm playing uh, and what I've been playing lately in, in, in the gaming world. A um, couple games real quick. Uh, XCOM 2 is a game that is free right now if you own a PS4 and if you are a PS4 Plus member. I recommend if you have not played XCOM 2 to go out there and make that shit a reality. I can't believe I haven't played XCOM 2 yet. Uh, I've been meaning to, but like my story um, before, and it seems to always be at times, I always intend on playing a lot of shit and certain things come up and you don't necessarily get to get to play those. But the beautiful thing about it is that there's so many games I haven't played. Uh, that just means that there's so many games I have yet to you know, get to. And eventually I will. And luckily the price will either be free as XCOM 2 is and or it will be very fucking low and easily affordable and easier to add to the library. PlayStation has enormous sales and I'm going to be jumping on that real quick as well. Um Hence my other game that I'm playing right now. But XCOM 2 is a fucking fabulous game. Uh, I've already poured a dozen hours or so into the game easily. And uh, I've just been recently frustrated with a mission because, you know, with that game, you know, if you lose uh, your team or your squad mates, they're gone forever. So you, you spend time leveling these guys up. Um, and when they fucking die on you like that, then, then you basically got to start from ground zero with another rookie and all this shit. So that's very frustrating. I'm on a mission right now that's frustrating the fuck out of me. I'm trying to get out of there alive. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, that, I'm going to leave that at that. But this is an excellent game. I'm playing that right now. I currently stopped playing it because of frustration. I'll get back to it when I calm my nerves. 
And uh, the other game that uh, I'm playing right now is The Surge. Now, The Surge is a game, if you guys haven't heard of it, um, Deck 13 is the company who, who made this shit, and they're responsible for doing, um, I think, The Lords of the Fallen, I think that's the name of it. Um, was an okay game, uh, but they really did due diligence on this game. It, it's kind of like a Dark Soul-esque game, a shorter version of it, and uh, it, it's really about a guy who uh, couldn't walk, he was a paraplegic, and it basically you know they're in a world where resource resources are at all time low and you know everybody it's hard to find work so this company called creo uh technology basically recruits people and he re was one of the recruits and what ended up happening was they ended up doing this experiment on him he was supposed to be sedated but for whatever reason he wasn't he went under and he uh he passed out from the pain because he wasn't sedated when he woke up he woke up with this fucking uh exosuit uh in in basically nailed into all parts of his body looking like looking like some sort of fucked up abomination and uh basically he he's in this world around other uh other employees that this happened to but the difference between him and them is the fact that they uh when they went under basically they never came back out as in terms of their mind they lost their mind um they're basically you know fucking zombies walking around here and they kill whatever they see in their sights and you're trying to get to the bottom of it and figure out what the fuck's going on why, why is this happening why there isn't really anybody around and i'll just leave it at that um like i said it's very it's a very dope game i really i really actually love the fucking game and the lore behind the game um it, it leaves you asking uh, for more and what I've read it also still to continues to do that even well after you beat the game so uh, I, I kind of like games like that kind of like shit that uh, you know open-ended for your own interpretation and things of that nature but if you haven't played it guys it's only 12:50 right now um, you have till Tuesday to, to, to do that and um, they also have a, a basically a, a $19 pack where if you buy uh, that then you get the DLC and you get all the uh, the extra suits and you get some extra weapons and shit so i definitely recommend that um you know that's what i did i went ahead and got that uh and i'm very happy with the game i'm, I'm still playing it i'll probably play when i get through recording this podcast for a little bit so even my son is on this game our body uh it's, it, it's it's pretty crazy but that's what i'm playing right now guys now what everybody has been waiting for we're going to jump into this motherfucking e3 i'm fucking i mean i'm ecstatic i can't believe what I've been seeing already thus far and E3 hasn't even technically started, man. It's not even, it doesn't start till Tuesday. You know what I mean? So, uh, it's just, it's fucking crazy. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Um, so many good things. I mean, and I have to say Xbox, Xbox has been doing their, uh, their fucking thing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. They, they've, they've shown some things, but there's something that they talked about a little bit. And, and, and if I'm an Xbox, uh, xbox one owner or xbox one x owner i'm going to be especially xbox one x owner i'm going to be a little a little upset and i'll get to that shortly but let's start off with xbox and let's start off with some of the things they've shown and you know like i said there's so many games that's been shown guys that i don't have enough time to touch on everything in this podcast so i'm going to touch on all the key uh key moments key particulars you know what i'm saying on this uh on this episode i'll be definitely covering other games uh as e3 comes out and you know all of that shit for you guys so don't you know don't get it twisted i'm here for you guys we're gonna make this happen but right now let's get into xbox and let's talk a little bit about what they fucking had shown and a lot of it is i'm gonna say uh i, I saw it coming um, as far as you know their ip their um first party games or whatever and you know you know let's get into this all right. First thing uh, I want to talk a little bit about is the fact that um, Xbox has a new system in the works, guys. Yes, they announced that they have a new system uh, that will probably be about two, two and a half years away. Now, this is what I was talking about when I was saying that this might upset some Xbox One X owners, even Xbox One owners. You know what I mean? Um, and I say that because the Xbox One X is pretty expensive right now and it didn't come out too long ago. I mean, you know, so my question would be, well, damn, you're already working on another system. But I mean, technically, it makes sense because we all know that the new PlayStation 5 will be dropping somewhere around 2020. And, you know, when they drop one, of course, you know, Xbox has to keep up with it. And it's all about an economy and it's all about, you know, the politics and gaming and how everything like that works. You don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be trumped by your know, competitors or whatever, because. Let's keep it real. Xbox has been getting ass whooped for the last 
four or five years easily by Sony. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're tired of that shit. So, you know, I guess you if you expect a new system from Sony in 2020, you should also expect a new system from uh, Microsoft. So, I mean, that is what it is. But, uh, you know, moving on from that, I want to kind of talk about what they have going on, man. They have this thing called Game Pass. And if you're not familiar with that, it's basically like a Netflix type of deal where you can stream your games for ten dollars a month. You pay ten dollars a month and you can play any game. They, they, they basically say uh, it doesn't matter what title. I mean, most people hearing this might say, well, what are you talking about? Older titles or, you know, um, older system games. No, they're, they're actually talking about any game. So you can get a brand new released game like Crackdown 3 that's coming and you can actually you, on that subscription, you can get access to that game. Now, I don't know all the familiars and how all that shit works, but uh, I will say that um, if I'm an Xbox guy, I'm pretty, pretty stoked about this Uh you know what I mean? So I'm guessing you pay that 10 and kind of like what, what we got going on, you know, and you can download it. And it seems like a little to be a little bit better because they're giving you access to all their games. You know what I mean? It, what it seems to me like for ten dollars a month. So I don't know, man. I mean, that that's something to definitely look into. I'm sure we'll hear more about it. We'll get more into it. You know, what I'm saying as E3 continues. But um, like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg for, you know, these companies, man. And I can't wait to see what else is going to happen if they're showing us all of this shit now. Um, I'm only I can only imagine what they have up their sleeves or what, you know, they have in store for us later. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, next up, man, they have something called. Oh, I'm sorry. I fucked up. Um, let's go and get into these fucking games. My bad. Um, let's get into some Xbox shit. Now, uh, Halo Infinite. Um, for you Halo guys out there, I'm sure you're pretty stoked about this. We don't have any gameplay footage or anything like that. We basically just have a short trailer of this title. I'm assuming we might get some gameplay footage uh, at E3 um, when it comes out. I I'm not. I can't really put my dime on that, but uh, it's definitely a game to look forward to if you're a Halo fan. And it's also an exclusive. So, um, you know, you kind of if you're an Xbox guy, you know, you, you probably saw this coming. I mean, that's one of their, you know one of their main IPs and you know if they didn't do a Halo game every year or two or three then you know who would they be next up in line guys we want to talk a little bit about Gears of War 5 now this fucking game looks to be fucking magnificent uh the story looks to be pretty dope uh we had a nice decent trailer and they had some gameplay footage on this game and basically we have a female protagonist uh this time who's the main character she was in the last uh gears of war game but she got she's taken over as the main character of this game and i think that's a pretty pretty cool brush breath of fresh air if you will and also the game looks excellent i can only imagine what it will look like on the xbox one x i will give xbox kudos for this game um also the halo game so you know those games are gonna look beautiful when they drop uh but this game really you know basically piqued my interest and i was always a, a gears of war guy um when i used to have and used to fuck with xbox you know the 360 i love the halo series not the halo series i'm sorry i love the gears of war series um back in the day and you know they seem to be doing some good shit with this game so i gotta give them props give them kudos much love uh to microsoft for this title um this is another title that you know is exclusive to them and you know you should have known or you could have probably saw this one coming um Next, uh, this game here is a classic and I don't know if it's going to be available on any other platform because right now they only showed it. Um, they only showed it on the Microsoft conference at Battletoads, man. Yeah. Battletoads. If you guys don't know about Battletoads, a lot of you guys might be too young to know what Battletoads was or what it is. Battletoads is a game originally coming and came out on a Nintendo. One of my favorite classic games of all time, Battletoads one and two, man. Um, that game was the shit. Um, and they're doing a new remake, a reboot of Battletoad. So um, it's supposed to be coming 2019. So it's not anywhere close. But uh, if you're a Battletoads fan, definitely check this out. Um, hopefully we get it for, you know, other systems, other platforms, because Nintendo, um, it was originally on them. So I'm wondering if the Switch might get it. I, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see um, as that takes place and as time goes by. But that's the wrap up for Xbox, right? That's just a quick little wrap up. Like I said, there'll be more um, when E3 hits. Uh, you know what I mean? As far as, you know, I wonder what they're doing. They're basically saying that they're, they're going to invest a lot more in exclusive. So I think they said something about 18 of them right now is what they got in the works or something like that. Um, don't let me get to uh, don't let me get to line. But good things, I guess, 
th- there's some light at the end of that Xbox tunnel. Um, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll just go from there. We'll leave it at that. Uh, moving on, and we're going to talk about a little bit about the Switch, the Nintendo Switch. Um, there wasn't really much to show that I was interested in um, as far as Nintendo Switch is concerned right now. I, I guess E3 is when we'll definitely uh, get the, the, the blunt, um, the blunt force of what they have to bring to the table. Um, but one thing I did see a game that was in the back of my mind, and I think it was a year ago when I first saw this, uh, this game and it, and it hadn't been released yet uh, for the Nintendo Switch and that game uh, is a game called it, it's a game called Pocket Rumble. Um, it is basically like a 16 bit retro style fighting game and it looks fucking awesome. I don't know. It's something about retro graphics, guys, that, that just do it to me, do something for me. I don't know what it is. I just like love that style. Um, game looks awesome, though. It, 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 it looks pretty to be pretty deep for a pocket fighter, um, if you ask me as well. So. I'm really looking forward to that. It, when I get my Switch, that's probably going to be one of the first purchases I make. Now, this next game that I'm going to bring up is a game that if it is true, if the rumors are true right now, uh, because right now they're technically rumors, but everybody's saying this shit. So I, I'm almost, you know, I'm almost I almost have to say that it's going to happen. But if it, if it, this happens, then this is probably going to be uh, <laughs> probably going to be me buying a Nintendo Switch. It's probably going to be the camera that broke, broke my back. Um, and that game is Fallout 3 remastered. Yes, uh, there's rumors out there in these motherfucking gaming streets that uh, Fallout 3 remastered is coming to the fucking Nintendo Switch. And if that is true, then go on and sign me the fuck up because I want it. Fallout 3 out of all the Fallouts is my favorite Fallout and a lot of people's favorite Fallout game um, in the series. And I want to see this game come to fruition on the Nintendo Switch, man. I would love to play this in bed. I would love to play this on the go. That would be awesome as fuck. Um, let's make that a reality, please. Let's make that a reality. It, it, it's a win, period, if the game comes out, because you know if it comes out for Nintendo Switch, it's going to be coming out for all platforms. So it's a win-win no matter what um, when it comes out. Um, can't wait to get my hands back on the Fallout 3 game. And you know, all the bells and whistles, probably the DLCs, all the shit that, you know, Fallout 3 came with and more we're going to get. So uh, you know, 60 frames, we'll probably get that too. I don't know about the Nintendo Switch, but hopefully, um, we can make that a reality. But yeah, if this comes out for the Switch, man, this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be me buying a Nintendo Switch. Straight up. Um, and, and that's what I have for Nintendo right now. I have more to come, like I said before, as E3 progresses. Uh, it's coming around the corner, so man, it's gonna be so much more to talk about. I might even put out an extra podcast, uh, um, in the next coming week or so. Uh, to give you guys a heads up on what the fuck is going on in these streets. And yeah, man, I mean, pretty excited right now. Uh, moving down the line on other game, the next game. We're going to talk a little about the Division 2. Yes, there's a Division 2 trailer out in these streets and it looks amazing. And I must say, I did rag a lot on the Division for a lot of different reasons, the reasons that I felt that they deserved. Um, but, um, I'm going to say that, you know, I'm not going to I couldn't sit here and say that I didn't have tons and tons of fun playing the division with my friends um, online. I I, I, I had some great times on the division uh, with my friends and, you know, just chasing builds. I mean, basically all day you, you, you work your way up to a fucking particular build and then you fucking next thing you know, um, it's it's irrelevant with an update. And then you're chasing another build. Another. That's how it worked out. I hope they fucking remedy that on this game. Um, from the previews and what I've seen, man, it looks like you can carry a shitload more weapons um, on, on in your bag or whatever from what I saw. I saw the motherfucker with like easily like seven or eight fucking weapons on deck. And, you know, so I wonder how that's going to work and play out in the game. But the environment and the atmosphere looks fucking dope. Um, they were on some plane uh, that was just basically, you know, oodled with just fucked up. Basically, it, it looked it looked awesome. And. I think I'm ready for another division fix because I, you know, I already know who's going to be jumping on this division shit. You know, I got some friends who, you know, and that's what makes it beautiful. That's what makes it fun, you know, playing with your friends or whatever. So I can't wait to jump back on that. Uh, I definitely will be picking up the division two and get my feet wet in this one. Hopefully they fixed a lot of things. But like I said, more to come on that. I'm sure uh, when E3 comes, we might get some some more clarification on a lot of things going on in this game. But right now, from what I saw in the preview, it looked excellent. You guys, uh, a lot of division heads out there. So let's hope that they uh, fix all those things and, you know, so we can have more fun and spend more hours playing with our teammates and our squad. Next up, guys, 
um, want to talk about some new kingdom hearts footage. Yes. Uh, I think they were giving us footage from like the ice stage, some ice level, um, in this game. And then they gave us a little bit more footage of just basic stuff, you know, throughout the, throughout the game. And of course the, the game looked beautiful. Uh, finally the first game, um, in the kingdom hearts series where the cutscenes are basically gameplay. So, you know how beautiful the cutscenes were in the Kingdom Hearts games. It's basically, you know, they've taken it and it's all it all looks to be just fluid. Uh, so the cutscenes go right into the gameplay and, and vice versa. Uh, the music, of course, always hypnotizes me, man. Always makes me feel that melancholy kind of uh, feeling. I don't know, man. It's just something about that game, that series, even though they're dealing with a lot of, you know, Disney characters and, you know, things you would associate with children. Uh, small children it, it it i don't know i can't explain it 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 i don't feel that way when i'm playing this game i mean i, I feel like a, i kind of do i feel like a a, a a breath of fresh air or some type of undescribed wonder just comes over me every time i play this game man and it, it, it just never fails you know what i mean so uh everybody there's lots of people looking forward to this and i'm one of those guys so i mean my wallet is looking pretty pretty scared right now because there's a lot of shit coming uh, most of the shit 2019 but um you know i'll be spending it so i'll be looking out for kingdom hearts guys finally coming to realization that it is coming upon us and we will have a new kingdom hearts game it's been fucking years about time next up man i want to talk a little about fallout 76 uh this game is a question mark to me right now and to a lot of others too man if you read reddit and if you're reading you know on the internet and shit because the game preview what they that they set up was fucking marvelous um it, it made me want to play whatever the fuck it was but um they're not saying what it is they haven't told us exactly what it is we don't know if it's a another fallout game or if it's a like a building simulator type of game and what i'm hearing in the video game streets is that that is uh what it's going to you know entail it's not going to be your typical fallout game it's going to be associated with another a, a different kind of play style um if you will so um, I'm anxious to see how that works um, and I want to see more and I can't really make a judgment on it right now because until I get that information. But from what I've seen from the preview, it looks pretty dope. But like I said, I got to see what that gameplay is like before I make any uh, any real assumptions um, and, and rather, you know, if I'm going to buy this or not. Um, I hope that, you know, whatever they have coming down the pipeline is beautiful and it, and it you know, it proves a lot of these guys out here that, that seem pretty upset about it wrong because most people want a, a actual fallout game they don't want to change the recipe you know maybe change the story and the setting what it looks to be what they've done here but um it looks like the gameplay is going to take a different turn and like i said i'll keep you guys posted on that next up we got hitman 2 you know um as a big fan of hitman um i you know am looking forward to this i wasn't happy at all with the way that they released the last series with you know different acts every month and all of that shit that, that was just a poor uh in my opinion marketing you know practice that was basically used to you know get a little bit more money i, I didn't like it um and i'm glad that they uh have abandoned that and basically just make a fucking game all right just make us a game and let us play that motherfucker all right um, you already got DLC and all this other shit. You guys can work into your magic and work into your game. So, I mean, why, you know, cut the game up in, in the different acts? Um, but Hitman 2, guys, um, preview looked dope. I can't wait to see more about more, you know, more of it. And, you know, we'll get into that. Like I said, there's so many games to talk about. It's like I don't even fucking know where to stop, where to begin, whatever. But anyway be looking out for that hitman too like i said more stuff to come uh as the weeks progress guys and as e3 comes to a close another game i want to talk about is just cause 4 um are you guys who love that crazy over the top uh action-packed uh adrenaline rushing type of games man you know you definitely want to check out um just cause uh 4 um, I have just cause three haven't played it yet. I, I, I have it in my archive and I haven't had time to play it. Um, it's a beautiful game though, graphically. Uh, but I got it free from the PlayStation store, but, um, you know, I don't know, just cause three to me, I don't know if I'd pay full price for it. Um, but 
it's definitely something worth looking into. I wonder, I don't know how you can trump the last one because the last one was just, from what I've seen, was just over the top, you know, um, and I haven't even really played it. But what I've seen and heard people say that it's just over the fucking top. I don't know how you top that shit, but I, I guess they figured out a way to try to make that a reality. And we'll, we'll, we will find out shortly. But Just Cause 4 is a game and it is real and it is coming. So guys, look out for that as well. Okay, the last few games I want to get into. Um, man, I'm very excited for these last uh, these last three games. Um, we're going to get into Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that's been a long time coming. We finally got a fucking um, trailer for this game. We still haven't got any gameplay footage technically for this game because there's people that saying it's an actual uh, first person game. Um, and I don't know how I feel about that, especially if it's going to be as big or bigger than the Witcher. And, um, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm, I'm, I want to see how that's going to going to go out. Um, hopefully we do get a third person view. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that'll happen. But like I said, nevertheless, if these guys made Witcher three, then they can't be uh, they can't be far off from this title. Um, I think this title is going to be good. I think it's going to be excellent. And I like the backdrop. I like the uh, the environment that the game takes place in. I'm looking very forward to playing this shit, guys. Um, all we have is a, a, a trailer. We don't have any gameplay footage, like I said. So let's we'll stay patient. Hopefully they show us some of the E3 a little bit more. If not, you know, as the months progress, we will find out more and more. But usually when they show new previews and things like that, we eventually get more. Like I said, this is just a taste. And hopefully these these, uh, these developers and stuff have some more for us in store when these... Uh, when these press conferences come up at the uh, at the E3. So I'll leave that at that, guys. All right. The, the last two games <laughs> that I want to get into real quick, uh, man, it, it, it it's it fills my heart with such joy. Um, One game that uh, I was wondering, and I'm sure a lot of us was if you're from software fans, and from software being the company who's synonymous for uh, the Dark Souls series and Bloodborne and all of those beautiful fucking dark games. They have finally showed us uh, some gameplay footage uh, and a backdrop of this title. Um, remember when we all saw that shit talking about um, Shadows Die Twice and we didn't know what the fuck that was and, and everything like that. Well, we finally know that the game is called Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. OK, and it's set is think of it like a Dark Souls game set in a Japanese uh, samurai slash ninja type of uh, environment or backdrop. Think about that. Um, think of his arm being a fucking trick weapon. His his arms is a fucking trick weapon weapon. So um, he, uh, he 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 I don't even know how to how to say this he he kind of he died i guess and and he's looking for revenge uh and i don't know the whole premise of the game but one thing that is different from this from software game um is that this game is also i think published by activision and this game is going to be released uh, on every platform so everybody's going to get a taste of this game this is not an exclusive by any stretch of the imagination um, everybody's going to get a chance to play this and that's good um I'm just very interested in this game. All I can say is that the, just check it out, check it out um, and tell me what you guys think. I would love to hear what you guys think about this game, but I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited about this game right here. Um, I want to play this. <laughs> yeah. Any friend software game, you know, I want to play it. And you know, we also have a bloodborne two coming. Um, so it, it, down the pipeline as well. So, I mean, you know, we got some good shit coming in from software. Keep up the good fucking work on this game. OK. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Check it out. Um, now, I know I said there was two games to talk about, but <laughs> another one just came to mind. And uh, I have to I have to address this this game as well. Um, and damn, did I lose my fucking train of thought? I fucking lost my train of thought. Well, until I recover my train of thought, let me jump back to the other game that I want to talk about. Um. And this game is Anthem. Now, there's been a lot of speculation out here in these video game streets about uh, about Anthem and about, you know, how, you know, EA is fucking this up. And 
how, you know, there's having, they're having issues. There's rumors of them having issues with the development of the game and all this shit. But then all that came to a halt when, you know, this press conference came out and we got a chance to play it. And in, well, I didn't personally get a chance to play it, but we got a chance to see the gameplay of it. And what sold me on it was the fact that I listened to the people who actually played the game. There were some people um, who played it and actually, you know, are loving the game. And that's what you want to see. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear, you know, okay, you saw the preview and everything like that, but I want to hear some people who actually put their hands on the game and I want to hear how they feel about it and then what they have to say about it. And that is what solidified my decision to go ahead and buy this game when it drops, because the game looks fantastic. It looks beautiful. It's open. It's a lot. It's so open. Um, the flight, the swimming underwater, um, the different classes. Um, there's so many things that excite me about this game. The fact that, you know, it's third person. Um, and you know, not like destiny, which is, you know, first person, this is third person. And, uh, you know, I'm just a third person type of guy. And when you go to the hub in the hub world or whatever, you know, then it, it becomes, you know, more intimate and it becomes first person. And that's the way I think it should be done, um, that way. And then when you go out, you know what I'm saying? You have all this shit around you. You want to be able to see the complete, uh, the environment around you. You want to see everything around you. In my opinion, that's just how I feel. But, um, Loving this game, man. Um, you can completely customize all of your rigs. Um, you're not basically if you choose one, you know, you're not stuck with it. You can actually eventually get to point to the point where you have all of the uh, all of the bills that you want. Every bill right now is currently like four. And, you know, I'm sure there'll be more as, as time progresses, as, you know post launch on the game and everything like that but then you can custom customize the colors how you look and all this stuff so i'm I'm very excited that everybody nobody's going to be the same everybody's going to look different be different um you can actually even go solo um on these missions and uh for missions that you might need help on you can uh if you don't have any friends that are currently online or whatever to play with you can recruit people who are in your area they got it set up to where like if there's somebody in your area online on the server then you can you know reach out to them and you know and you can get help or give help to somebody else. So everybody can win on this game. Everybody can eat. And that's the way it should be. That's the way I like it. And it looks fucking fabulous, man. Um, and it comes out, of course, uh, 2019. Uh, so we won't be seeing it this year. But, you know, it's on its way. And I'm glad to see that they finally picked up the slack. And, you know, those rumors, you know, uh, were basically put to bed. Now, that was probably the only bright thing in the EA conference as far as I'm concerned. Uh, other than that, it was boring and, you know, it was typical of EA. But this game here um, should definitely uh, should definitely save some people. Um, I know I'm buying this. Uh, <laughs> this is one that's been on my list for a long, long fucking time. So um, without that being said, I mean, what else can I say about it? Um, Anthem looks to be fucking dope. If you don't believe me, check it out. There's plenty of videos on uh, YouTube that you can check out and verify for yourself if you have not already. Um, now, the other game that uh, I was talking about that, you know, basically lost my head, skipped my brain and I couldn't figure out what the fuck it was. And I'm stupid for even, you know, I feel dumb for even forgetting this game. How could you forget a game like this? Uh, this game here, guys, uh, is another one that I can't wait to fucking play. This is Devil May Cry 5. I was a big Devil May Cry fan, especially the first couple uh, classics, straight classics. Um, this one looks to be epic. Uh, the creator said that this is the best uh, uh, best Devil May Cry game He's he feels that he's ever made. And with words like that, you can tell he's very proud. They're showing his footage. Of course, we're not going to get it too much later down the line, but it is in development, guys, and it looks fucking breathtaking. Uh, the previews that they showed us was was dope. I'm already infatuated with the female uh, sidekick or helper in the game. Um, she's a sexy, sexy little chick, man, glasses, and she seems to be uh, addicted to, uh, you know, all that extra extra action and all that danger and you know she seems to be uh into that money as well so i don't know man it looks to be fucking epic uh dante was also seen um on this game uh i, I can't wait to play this uh and i sure there's a lot of god uh devil may cry fans excuse me that want to get into this and can't wait to get in this so we have a lot of shit coming man um and this game of course is, is a multi-platform game it's going to be you know, on Xbox and it's going to be on Sony and PlayStation. So, uh, you know, Nintendo is the only one that I, I kind of have 
I, I kind of I'm trying to waiting to see what they're going to do. You know, they're holding most of their shit until um, E3. So I want to see what's going to go on with them, what they got cracking. Um, other than that, man, everything so far and I've mostly talked about has been, you know, Xbox and has been, you know, the main two systems. Um, but I don't want to insult the Nintendo fans by saying the main two systems because Nintendo might be your main system. So I don't mean it like that. But um, as far as, you know, AAA titles, you know, third party AAA titles, that's what we have on the table right now. There are, of course, more games, guys, that I have not had time to touch on. Um, I really want to touch on these games and I will be basically updating you guys on these games coming up. Like I said, E3 is right around the corner. So there'll be two or three more podcasts, man, with uh, with, you know, us talking about these games, getting deeper into some of these games and some of the games that I haven't even had a chance to talk about that. But um, that is going to do it for this podcast, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Um, Definitely take some of these games and and take a gander at some of these games, man, Um, if you are curious I, I highly recommend you guys take a look at some of these titles we talked about uh today and be looking forward to more coverage on this e3 shit um as the weeks progress uh, be looking forward to another big podcast next week on e3 that's probably going to be super robust like i said i may have to do two podcasts um or make it a super long podcast but it'll probably be you know the the uh latter of the two but with that being said, guys, I'm going to get the fuck up out of here, man. Um, have a good fucking day. Thank you guys for listening. All my listeners, I love you dearly. Holler at your boy. Um, the website coming soon, beautifulnerds.com. Be checking out for that. It's going to be your one-stop shop for things, anime, and gaming. So uh, be looking out for that, guys. Uh, yeah, plenty of t-shirts, plenty of uh, plenty of gear, you know, for the gamers and the anime lovers alike, guys. You know, beautiful nerds, man. That's what we are. That's what we do. So be looking out for that. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely hit me uh, on the platforms, guys. You can hit me on Facebook at um, at Studio MacGyver uh, seven nine. You can also hit me on Instagram. I'm sorry, that's Instagram. I'm sorry. Instagram is at Studio MacGyver seven nine. Um, you can hit me on Facebook at uh, Studio MacGyver. You can also hit me on Twitter at Studio MacGyver as well. All right. With that being said, guys, you guys have a nice day have a good e3 i hope you guys enjoy it and uh you have been listening to studio macgyver's dragon ball and video game podcast see you next time (laughs) 